Thanks to Manta for sponsoring this video. More about them at the end of the sketch. Hey, uh, Dungeon Master? What's up? Uh, I don't know how to say this. Other than that, I, I tried Dungeons and Dragons and I don't think it's for me. Well, it's for everyone, not just you. Like, I couldn't connect with it, you know? I, it's just not what I want to do in a role-playing game. Well, what do you want to do in a role-playing game? I don't know. I, I was hoping I could come to you for some suggestions on different TTRPGs and what they focus on. Yeah, easy enough. I'll pitch you some TTRPGs, let you know the main premise of it, and try to find similarities between D&D and the TTRPG so there can be an easy transition into it. Okay, uh, sweet. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Uh, so let's start off with the TTRPGs that have a similar feel to D&D. First, the most popular is Pathfinder. It's a modified version of the D&D 3.5 rule set, so it shares the same classes and races as D&D, but also has many other classes and races to choose from. They also share the same ability scores and many of the same skills as D&D, so the character sheet will look quite familiar. The things that stand out in Pathfinder is the depth and complexity offering detailed options for combat, magic, and skills. And from what I've read, many people who have transferred over from D&D to Pathfinder 2nd Edition has stated that Pathfinder fixed a lot of the problems they had with D&D. Oh, look up No Nat Ones on YouTube if you want to learn more about Pathfinder. Cool, thank you for that, but I wasn't looking for something that is more complex. I guess I was maybe wanting to go more the old school? Oh, easy enough. Let me introduce you to Dungeon Crawl Classics. It pays homage to early fantasy gaming, and again, it's similar to D&D &D by having many of the same ability scores and uses the same seven dice you can find in a TTRPG set, and you'll see some familiar classes and races. What makes DCC different is instead of making one character, you start off by making multiple level zero characters. Though, many of your characters will die it's fun to see how your character becomes a hero. Also, DCC loves its randomness, which makes the game less complex for modern RPGs. Uh, check out Bob World Builder on YouTube. He's a huge advocate for dungeon crawl classics. I do like my randomness. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't necessarily want to play something that is similar to D&D. D&D is kind of built around combat, but I, I do like the narrative side of RPGs more. Oh, City of Mist! It's a 2D6 system that is very narrative based. The cool thing about this game is both the master of ceremonies, oh, the dungeon master, and the players help create the narrative and the world around them. So for instance, the MC can say the players enter a scrapyard, but then one of the players can be designated to describe what the scrapyard looks like. You can also play as normal humans who are granted these extraordinary powers through a thing called mythos. A mythos can almost be anything you want it to be, and you gain powers that align with what your mythos is. You could gain the powers of King Arthur or Godzilla. Heck, you could gain the powers of Shrek if you wanted to. City of Mist has their own YouTube channel that teaches you about their game, and you can listen to a live game that my team and I created over on One Shot Campaign. That sounds great. Oh, I think that'd be perfect. Uh, but I, I was hoping for something that would revolve around more teamwork. I really want to interact with my group more. I, that, say no more. Let me introduce you to Blades in the Dark. Oh, you mean like this? <sighs> you really are a dad now, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. Okay. Well, Blades in the Dark is where you and your party are a crew of criminals that want to make a mark in the city. Uh, think of it like your rogues taking on a heist. The game really emphasizes storytelling and character development to the point where the narrative drives the mechanics. And speaking of mechanics, it has a couple that really stand out. One of them is a clock system to track progress and add tension to missions. It's mainly there to keep the story moving and to help those sudden pauses you encounter in D&D. And this is the mechanic that I really love, and this is the flashbacks. So let's say we put you right into a heist and an encounter happens. You can initiate a flashback where you and your team come up with a plan to overcome this encounter and then be brought back in the present to see if you accomplish it. Huh, it helps take away those long extensive planning moments that you may encounter in other RPGs. Uh, go look up Zbashu and Dave Thomavore's reviews of the game. Oh, fun, I think that'd be perfect for the right group. But I don't think that would really work for ours. 
Uh, we want something that would put us on edge, you know? Elements of horror along with the unknown. Well, let me introduce you to my last suggestion, Call of Cthulhu. It's a TTRPG based off of the Cthulhu mythos, and it can create a tense, suspenseful, and immersive horror experience. The game is more narrative-based, but focuses more on investigation, puzzle solving, and uncovering hidden truths. You play as characters such as detectives and scholars and more, and your characters have a sanity system, which encountering the supernatural can lead to a loss of sanity, impacting your mental health and leading to various psychological effects. Though combat isn't a focus in this game, also it's super brutal, you do use a percentile system for your skill checks, which is different from the other TTRPGs I suggested. If you want to play a 1920s detective horror film, this is your way to go. Uh, check out Puffin Forest and Davy Chappie's videos on the system. Whoa, man, I didn't realize the mechanics could be so different, but also so simple. <laughs> man, I was scared it was gonna be tedious to learn a new system, but now this has just got me feeling excited, bored. Oh, and kind of horny. Oh, I'm gonna go read a book. Oh? Oh! And now, a word from our sponsor. Hey, Duke, how's the child? How's being a father? I haven't slept in 34 days. She can't sleep without the light on. Oh, well, have you tried Manta Sleep and their world's best sleep masks? I've tried being sleep deprived. Zero sleep out of 10. Okay. Well, here, try this. Oh. So that is the Manta Sleep Mask Pro. The mask ensures deeper sleep with true 100% blackout, C-shaped eye cups for side sleepers comfort, no pressure on eyelids or lashes, and advanced breathable materials. I've been using that mask ever since my child was born, and it has literally saved me from sleepless nights, and I can't thank Manta Sleep enough for keeping me functioning. I wish I could hear what you're saying, but it's too dark in here now. Well, let's switch things up a bit. Oh my. This is their weighted mask, which offers improved long rests and mood with its evenly distributed weight, customizable fit, and its soft and durable materials provides 100% blackout for complete relaxation. It has been perfect to help me with my sore eyes after editing all day. If only I could see how well this mask works. Well, if you can't see, then it's doing its job. Don't get smart with me. Manta Sleep also has many other masks to choose from, so click on the link in the description or pinned comment and use my code OSQ for 10% off your order. So it's finally dark, but I'm still not falling asleep. You have to close your eyes. Oh!